where did my day go? <laughs> I just lost my entire day. But I'll just do whatever I had to do tomorrow. That was exactly what I used to say when I would play video games. Every single day I would wake up and play video games the entire day, turn my PC or my Xbox off at night time just to realize I hadn't done anything with my day. And because I was gonna go, I was going to sleep dreaming about my video game, thinking of, damn, what angle I could have you know, taken differently or could I have changed something that I fumbled a bag in my play, it didn't really bother me. Doug? Doug, what's going on? Are you okay? What are you? In the back of my mind and my subconscious, I kind of knew that there was a problem, but I just overlooked it. This is the reality of what gaming addiction is really like. Gaming for me was wake up, play video games, daydream about video games at school. At its worst, I remember driving home consistently during my lunch breaks just to get an additional ranked game in of League of Legends, just so I could rank up. This didn't include, you know, sneaking my laptop to school and convincing the teacher at a time before IT was, you know, uh, very commonly used. Playing during my class, so I'd finish up all my work ahead of time and then convince the teacher that I was doing additional learning and uh, play on my PC in class. The thing that makes uh, gaming addiction, addiction so different to other addictions is the fact that with gaming addiction, it's overlooked. It's like having a, having depression and getting a disability check to put in your car. You hop into your car and you look normal, so people look at you as, as if you're insane, but in reality, you just have a different form of a disability. Now, I'm not saying someone with depressed is disabled. It's a terrible comparison, but at the same time, I'm trying to give you an analogy that you understand. Gaming is a very, very, very overlooked addiction. I put gaming in the same category as pornography. You can't see it, but someone might be hooked to it. Gaming gives you so much dopamine and serotonin every time you achieve the smallest thing ever. And it makes achieving real life goals so much more difficult. You're stuck in this endless route where you're fed just a little bit of progression, a little bit of progression over and over just in your mouth as you sit there by a tap just waiting for a little bit of a drop of serotonin and dopamine to be given to you. You decide you're gonna go and uh, practice a new skill. All of a sudden, the skill that you're practicing has nothing in it for you. You feel like it's, it's just empty. There's no reward mechanism feeding your brain back as, you know, gaming. And with gaming, it's so minimal. You just turn and go on your computer. It's as simple as that. And now whatever you crave is met. For me, that craving was competition. I love competing. And whether it's sports, if I have the ability to play sport, I'm gonna compete in that. But gaming, like I said, you just turn your body and you're competing. All of a sudden, you're in a psychological warfare with someone. How are you gonna outplay them? That is so enticing to so many people. And it's made like that. Games are made nowadays with how much more can they entice the user. You have young kids that have attention spans historically at their lowest, or something like two minutes. <laughs> It's not just a coincidence, it's complete fabrication, and it's not spoken about. With gaming being so overlooked, you can almost certainly find the person that says to the press person, just smile. They say the same thing to someone who's a, who's a gaming addict, is just turn off your computer. And in all honesty, yes, just turn off your fucking computer and I promise your gaming addiction will dissipate. Every single time you play a game, just press that off button and it will stop. But it's not that easy. Gaming has so many scapegoats. And when I talk about addiction, I'm not talking about these pussy numbers. Oh, I play an hour or two a day. I don't call that an addiction. An addiction is when, when you can't live your life without this thing. You feel sad when that thing's taken away. You don't want to exist without that thing. That is addiction. Oh, you have an assignment to do? Oh, my game might just be 10 minutes if I play really well. Game. I remember rationalizing, socializing, as a form of scapegoating to gaming. Cause you know what? If I'm talking to my in-game teammates, I must be socializing. Yeah. 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 Bullshit. I promise if you meet up with some of your online mates, you're gonna find conversation isn't as smooth as it was when you were gaming with them because you're commentating about something the entire time. You're not directly asking them, so uh, when did your father pass away? You know, you're not having some intimate conversation with them and the intimacy doesn't immediately just spark the same way it did when it 
when when you game the crippling social factor of gaming is one of the most commonly used cave codes for people who game is oh i am socializing i'm i'm just gonna be honest you're not gonna see a gaming addict go and pick up a nine out of ten uh, at a club it just won't happen they don't have the social capacity too and that's just honest i also want to show you guys that there's so much you're missing out on and so much that i would have continued to miss out on great i'm getting a phone call the opportunities that go past because you're so busy sitting there at your computer thinking that you're making some minuscule progress in a game that's going to disappear in the next 10 to 15 years it's pathetic I have all these little accolades that I've earned, you know, oh, I was one of the best in New Zealand, one of the best in Oceania, oh, I reached this and this and this and this rank, oh, I was in the top leaderboards for this. It doesn't matter. <laughs> to anyone who is moving on in life, it doesn't matter. The, mm, the biggest benefit I've had from gaming has come when I enter a social interaction with someone and they've also gamed. I can just have input in the conversation and we can discuss things at a detailed level if they've also played at a detailed level aside from that gaming has never ever ever helped me also a little bit of coordination and iq game iq in game iq what i'm trying to articulate to you is gaming when you're addicted is a total waste of time even as a leisure activity quite honestly you can just get your ass to the gym spend an hour in the gym and i promise you it's going to be a lot more rewarding and progressive down the line than gaming will ever be I don't entirely mean it all so negatively. Gaming as a coping mechanism can be one of the best things because it's so immersive. Gaming for me was this immersive world where nothing else matters. I actually learned how to pick up girls through playing video games. Not because I was socializing with them. Don't, don't get it twisted. You, you don't socialize with females much in video games and plus they're usually ugly. But I was so immersed in the game that I was playing that every single time that I that I got a message from a girl, I just look at my phone and throw it to the side. You know how they say like, oh, you should wait, it takes some time before replying to a girl. I learned that when I was 12, not because I was actively trying to ignore them, but I just had other shit that I genuinely had to do. Uh, at least in my mind, the perceived importance of playing this game was so much more important. You know, I had to defuse the bomb and B side to make sure my team was happy or else I have grown men yelling at me versus a 12 year old girl talking some shit whatever there's one thing you take away from this video it's game and moderation but just know always at the back of your mind that it is a waste of fucking time